Well, good morning. It is Wednesday morning and yeah, I'm back with you and uh, ready to share, ready to share some thoughts again on our theme for 2021, uh, Rebuild. That is our theme for 2021. Uh, if you're tuning in for the very first time, we want to rebuild and we need to see the church being rebuilt. And we're taking our stand from Nehemiah, what Nehemiah did, what Nehemiah saw when he came across uh, the walls of Jerusalem. And that is where we need to be. Now, my title that I want to talk about or my, my message or my talk that I want to talk to you about this morning is prepare the burnt stones. <laughs> Notice this, prepare the burnt stones stones yeah many of us have been burned as a result of this pandemic uh we have broken been broken down many of us have lost loved ones many of us lost jobs businesses and so we're in this fragile situation in our own lives that also need rebuilding so it's not just the church that needs to be rebuilt but you need to be rebuilt and possibly you might feel like a burnt stone today you might feel uh, Pastor, how can I play a part in, in establishing the kingdom of God and, and, and helping rebuild that what the enemy has robbed from us when my own life is in a place of shambles? Well, you see, again, as you learn how to put your faith and trust in God to build his kingdom, as you establish his, he will establish yours. Because there's a principle in the things of God. When you put God first in your life, then God puts you first in all the things that need to be done in and around your life. And again, what a place to be there alongside of God in rebuilding that, what the enemy has broken. Because once you partner with God, you have the greatest partner in life that has all the resources that you possibly would need to see your own life being rebuilt during this time. So prepare those burn stones of your own life as you look to how you can be part of rebuilding God's kingdom, reestablishing that what needs to be reestablishing, getting the bride ready for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Again, doing that what God has called you to do. Now, Nehemiah chapter 4 verse 2 says this, and, and the enemy of, of Nehemiah was Sanballat. And, and Sanballat said, what are those feeble Jews doing? Notice this. Uh, again, as the world might look at us and say, look at these feeble Christians. What have they come through? You know, the churches have been closed down. Uh, what are they trying to do? Uh, what, what, are, what do they think they can do uh, during this time of this pandemic? Well, will they restore their wall? Look what he goes on to say. Will they offer sacrifices? Will they finish in a day? <laughs> Can they bring the stones back to life from those heaps of rubble burnt as they are? So Sam Ballard looked and said, man, these guys, who do they think they are? Isn't it crazy as the world hears us talk and, and, and we talk because we have faith and, and, and we know that our faith is in God and our future is in God and, and not in man, not in the things that we see crumbling around us, but knowing that, that if God be for us, then who can be against us? And, and when we think like this, we talk like this, the world kind of looks at us and thinks, they strange. And, and actually, in fact, we are. You see, Sanballat was the enemy of both Israel and Nehemiah. And he didn't want him to succeed. Just like the pandemic we might be facing. That again, uh, thinking that how are we going to succeed? How are we going to get our lives back on track? There's so much that we have lost. So much that has been broken down around us. You see, for the church of Jesus Christ to rise above the enemy called COVID-19, we need to see it like the Nehemiah saw Sanballat as a distraction. Now, you need to go back and you need to read the book of Nehemiah because I do not have the time just to go through verse for verse. But you will see again the strategy of Sanballat, of, of what he tried to do, the way he tried to distract Nehemiah and what Nehemiah did in return. He wouldn't bow down to him. He wouldn't listen to him. He wouldn't take his his. Uh, 
uh, uh, call from him, as it were, of the direction that he was to take. In fact, he knew that he had a job to do. He realized that he had a period, a short period of time, a short window of time to get the walls ready and reestablish him the way they needed to be done before the enemy took over. You see, Sanballat wanted to distract Nehemiah through fear by reminding him that he was a slave held captive by a king. He, he wasn't going to find his freedom in what he was doing. Now, again, I, I want to say to you thus, that at times, this is what the devil wants you to feel. He wants you to feel like you are a captive held captive by the devil himself. Now, we have our freedom and we have found our freedom and no one can remove that freedom from us because our freedom is found in what Jesus Christ accomplished upon the cross of Calvary. You see, to break into this new year, the king that had captured the world still ruled through fear. And as a result of that, fear was still a driving force. And Sanballat thought that he would come with the fear tactic and he would try to distract Nehemiah with a fear tactic. And, and this actually in actual fact motivated him. Notice this, the fear tactic of Sambalat motivated Nehemiah. And, and the more he tried to distract him, the more motivated Nehemiah became to complete the work that was set before him. And again, I want to say this to you. Do not allow the fear of the enemy to come in, to distract, to remove, to take away from you that what the devil thinks he has over you because the devil has nothing over you. The only thing that the devil has over you is a bunch of lies. Now, look what Nehemiah starts out with. Every time Sanballat comes to try and distract him, Nehemiah goes back and this is what he says, God of heaven, God who keeps his covenant of unfailing love with those who love him and obey him his commands. Now, this is what Nehemiah was saying. The God in him and for him was greater than the fear that Sanballat tried to force upon him. You see, he reminds God that he is in an, in an unbroken covenant relationship with him. He knows that God will respond on his behalf. Today, you might feel that a fear again has gripped your heart. I want you to push fear aside and allow yourself to know that God is with you, God is for you, and God is not against you. God has given to us the greatest covenant that man could ever desire, His Son, Christ Jesus. And again, Jesus said, I will not leave you nor forsake you, not even unto the end of this age. Stay strong. Do not allow fear to dominate your life.